Hi Shivang. Hi Ajay. So welcome back to the Kunzum Travel Cafe once again. I want to go to Africa and so do many of my viewers. And I don't think I can find a better guide than you who can help me plan the whole itinerary. Okay, let's assume I want to go to Kenya and I want to do the best of wildlife there. Make an itinerary for me. I think Ajay, it all, again, it all uh, dwells down that to that one basic question, the purpose of the visit. So, I mean, uh, if I start from uh, something which uh, I do on a normal basis, uh, taking groups of uh, amateur photographers who uh, want to visit uh, Kenya. So, starting with the migration time, so uh, which is probably the hottest selling uh, time for uh, places like Masai Mara and stuff. Um, if you are going from a photography purpose, if photography is something which is your main motive and uh, if that is something which excites you, then I would suggest a minimum of five to six nights in Masai Mara because that is, you need that much of time to follow a subject, you know, come out with a good port portfolio of images and uh, otherwise if you are just running from one park to another, you know, you are just left nowhere. So, uh, but if you are going from a normal, uh, you know, perspective of just exploring Kenya from uh, exploring Kenya and visiting various parks, uh, a three night stay in Masai Mara should be good enough. Uh, okay, let me just cut you yeah. there. So, do you think Masai Mara is cliched because everyone seems to go to Masai Mara, but is Masai Mara still a place that one should go to? Uh, well, again, uh, the visibility there is easier. Okay. Um, there are a lot of vehicles inside the park. Sure. Uh, all vehicles are connected using wireless devices and all. Okay. So, so the information network out there in Mara is very strong. Okay. Which makes it easier for people to see wildlife, to shoot wildlife, whatever is the purpose. Okay. So, um, from that perspective, and of course, uh, Masai Mara has got that kind of a hype because of uh, all the BBC and National Geographic films, which we keep on seeing. Okay. And uh, so, and and trust me, whatever we see, we get to see it with our own eyes there. Okay. So, so, so Masai Mara, would you say for family and enthusiasts, at least four days for photographers, upwards of six to seven days? Exactly. Okay. So after Masai Mara, what's the next park that I should go to? Uh, well, if we are going to Mara, then I think within that circuit, uh, uh, there are these two places. Uh, one is Nakuru, okay, and uh, the other uh, place is called Bogoria. Okay. So traditionally, Nakuru used to be the place for flamingos. Okay. Uh, all those wonderful visuals of uh, millions of flamingos uh, in the Nakuru Lake, which uh, you must have seen on channels like Nat Geo and all. Sure. They've all been shot there. Okay. But in the past few years, the lake has become a bit flooded. Okay. Because of which the entire flamingo migration has taken place in this uh, adjacent lake called Bogoria. Okay. <coughs> so it's quite, uh, it's within that circuit uh, of Nairobi to Mara. Okay. So you should definitely halt there for a couple of days and witness the flamingo uh, spectacle, I would call it. Okay. Uh, I mean, a two nights uh, stay in Bogoria should be good enough, and okay. uh, especially during the months of uh, August, September, October. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's quite good. Okay. So, so. moving ahead, uh, on the other side of Nairobi, um, there are two parks which uh, I love a lot. Uh, one, one is a place called Ambusili. Okay. So. Uh, it's probably the best place to see African elephants. Uh, wow, I love the, elephants. Yeah, so against the backdrop of Mount Kilimanjaro and wow. stuff. Okay. So uh, it's purely an elephant park. Okay. Uh, you get to see other wildlife also, but people normally go for elephants there. Okay. And again, a two-night stay should be good enough. Okay. For Bagoria. And the last place which I am very fond of, and normally people do not visit that place, uh, it's a forest called Savo. Okay. So. I mean, from a popularity perspective, it uh, became popular because of that film Ghost in the Darkness okay. uh, on man eaters of Savo and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's a completely different terrain altogether. Okay. You know, it's it looks like uh, you know you get a feeling that you're doing a safari in Ranthambore and you're seeing African wildlife in that kind of a habitat. Wow. And the other unique thing about Savo is that uh, because of uh, volcanic eruptions and stuff. Uh, that forest is built over 
you know, a dormant volcano, okay. uh, which erupted thousands of years back. And all. So the soil there is totally red in color. So a lot of wildlife that you see is totally red in color. So, you know, it's the land of the red elephants. Wow, uh, that's a new one. I've never heard of red yeah, elephants. Yeah, so, you know, the elephants take, keep on taking mud bath with red soil and also, you know, the color has become totally red. Okay. So, uh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's a dense forest. So, it, uh, suddenly from after Masai Mara, that transition to Savo, you suddenly feel that you have entered into an Indian forest and again you are searching for wildlife. Uh, searching for lions, elephants, you will get it uh, in a period of two or three days. Uh, okay. You'll get some, get to see some good stuff. Okay. And but everything will be drastically different from what you see in Mara. Okay. Same wildlife, different habitats. Wow. And what are the best times to go for all these parks? Um, well, I mean, if you are going to uh, Masai Mara during the migration time, and if uh, the budget allows, and if you want to extend your trip. Uh, you, you can plan it in one go. Okay. So, um, again, if photography is the purpose, after spending five or six nights in Mara, you can just keep on hopping to all these places for two nights and in a 15, 16 day kind of a period, you can cover the entire stretch. And but what time of the year one should go? July, August, September. Okay. Uh, is the time if you want to club it with migration. And otherwise? Otherwise, if you want to go, you can probably do it during January, February, which is the off season for Mara. The uh, rates, the room rates and all will be at a rock bottom price okay. and uh, you can club it with all these destinations as well. Okay, and other <coughs> than the migration of the wildebeest, yeah. what's the difference between the peak season and the not so peak season? Well, migration is uh, the key thing and uh, you know, essentially when, when I talk about the word migration, the, the immediate picture you ha have in your head is wildebeest crossing the river sure. and all those things. But that's only one aspect of migration. Uh, there's so much of prey base. Okay. Because of the prey base, uh, the predator action is also at an all-time high. Okay. So, in the off-season, when the migration is not there, uh, you know, you get to see stuff. You still still get still get to sure. see a lot of uh, the big five and all those things. But yeah, uh, whether the action part will happen or not, that is that will be a question mark. Okay, I think that's very useful uh, uh, for my itinerary planning as for our viewers. So, but I'm going to come back to you and really get down to some of, uh, some frequently asked questions about going down to the actual planning of the trip. Sure. Yeah, thank you once again. Thanks.